Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, welcome to this uh, pilot program for uh, an I see it as an opportunity to understand our our leadership style, our follower style, our companion style, whatever it is. Um, and just to give you a little bit of uh, background, um, I'm known as Dr. Pauline Crawford, but my experience over many decades, um, I came into this field actually through the world of image consultancy. And that was back in the, in the 80s and 90s. I go back a long way. But in that time, I was working with clients in the corporate world and the business world and, and some very um, interesting sectors in the, in the UK. I worked for people like banks and pharmaceuticals, uh, Hewlett Packard, Barclays, BT. And actually, I was working in the field of taking them into psychology of, of confidence, but we used the ideas of color, shape, and scale to help people, in a way, you know, have some fun with their style, but also to understand um, their own, really, even their dress style. And it was my first understanding and awareness of how who we are as a physical being impacts our emotional being. And our presence in the world is very important. And it was from that time I started studying patterns. That's what I, I saw in front of me when I saw women and men. I saw um, relationships between their physicality and their emotionality and who they were as people in words and deeds. And that was really where I started this idea of gender dynamics intelligence. So it's not about gender per se in terms of what we know is going on at the moment with I would say gender dysphoria, but this is who are we when we're in the room? How do we impact with other people? What does that mean for us? And how do we get to know, you know, what's going on? So that's just a little bit of history, Bean, because I'm now here in America, having traveled around the world and lived in Malaysia and now in the US. And as I always say, uh, people are people. And the way we relate to each other is the same in the automotive industry, in the in the the coaching industry, in the pharmaceutical, in any industry. And so my goal was to help people understand each other and, and bring about some uh, easy way of assessing and identifying people according to their physicality, but taking it to an emotional level and an energy level. Because one thing we know about the world is it's, it's all about energy, vibration and frequency. So as we go through this program today, we will get later on to look at once we know who we are and how we present ourselves, how do we interact? How do we create harmony? That's one of my passions is a world of harmony, which is kind of a big passion at the moment, given how distraught the world is and how challenging it is, uh, not just in the business world, but in our home lives and, and dare I say, in nation states uh, across the world. And now that I manage um, many programs and many cultures, uh, including many in Africa, um, and you know, Musa, and I, Musa has been helping me understand Ethiopian culture. I've been trying to get to understand the American culture. I'm, I'm getting there. <laughs> but the American culture is different to the English culture. It's different to um, any European culture, any African culture. And when I lived in Malaysia, that was different again. So I come from, if you like, a behavioral, conversational, um, physical, gender dynamics experience. And I was absolutely thrilled to get to know Christine because we met through coming together on my wisdom circles. So I have world wisdom circles, which I hope you'll join us with, Mark. I know Hadass has been on some, mostly has been on many. Um, and so it was actually Christine's uh, inspiration that led to the idea of using actual physical colors and paper, which I hope you've got present with you. So Christine, just give us a little intro as to you, yourself before I go into the presentation. Sure, yeah. So um, I'm a former ad agency owner, lover, advertising, marketing, branding, all about color and design and words and how they impact people. So this was a natural segue for me to discover that I could dive into this concept of using your innate creativity to express and transform 
emotional trauma, life challenges through this concept of color and art. So um, being someone who has just been so impacted by color, design, shape, scale, all of that, this is just a beautiful transformation for me. And then to share this experience and help people find their own self-awareness through that creative spirit, that energy that Pauline is talking about. That's what it is. So we need, we all need to access, access that creative gene that we have, because that holds the key to self-discovery and knowing who we are and giving, giving that ruler, philosopher, who, whatever your archetype is, giving that a visual shape and form will, will help you understand how you move in the world and um, how you're impacting and contributing to your life and those around you. So that went a little deeper than an intro, but I'm just so excited <laughs> to, to explore this little journey with you. Okay, and and um, uh, maybe it'd be a good idea just before we, because what in the presentation I want to take you into the ideas of how we, how I came up with the archetypes, but how it now plays into this um, artistic representation. So, um, Mark, what expectation you have? What goal do you have coming into this program here? So this this is my first foray into archetypes. Um, I'd never really heard of archetypes before, so I'm just I'm excited uh, about learning more about how, which archetype, which either archetype or combination of archetypes uh, I I kind of fall into. And um, cu I'm curious. I'm, I'm, I'm coming in with uh, um, a curiosity, if you will, to discover more about myself and to see how I can integrate this into um my professional and personal communications give me a better understanding of my past, where I've come from. There's a lot of um, a lot of things that I've, I've been dealing with. Um, I'm 57, and uh, was raised in a uh, in a household where religion was a very very big part of our lives. And uh, once I got older, I, I realized. You know, wait a second. You know, religion has its place, but at the end of the day, um, you know, I, I, we, we are we are ultimately accountable and responsible for not only what we do, but how we react to the stimulus that we receive from the rest of the world. And oftentimes, um, you know, habit, right? Habits. We we all fall into certain habits and they say that we are what we repeatedly do and so um it, I'm, I'm just i'm just looking forward to to what this is and just have an open mind and and, and remain coachable and just learn thank you um mose well, hi Adassa. so mose how how would what would you like to get out of today? You would you would like sales wise to many people across the world. What do you know about it? You know, the the, the main thing that uh, from the, our initial meeting, uh, and then going further more, and then coming to the sessions, and then I think I got my classification of uh, arch archetypes right. I, what what where you classified me? Forgot. We'll get to that. We'll, we'll discover more today. Okay. <laughs> So I'm trying to maximize on that. And then, uh, you know, I came from a country where, you know, people live in compassion, empathy, and authenticity, and then, and then highly believed in uh, uh, honest uh, kind of uh, collaboration. And then coming from that and then attending your previous sessions, uh, that helped me maximize, you know, of what I built throughout years uh, through my career and then several engagements because my background is in medical. So in medical, you need to have that uh, empathy and compassionate uh, intersynic uh, apathy towards everyone. So bringing that attitude to 
this group and then learn and maximizing it will be a huge asset. Absolutely. Thank you. Hadassah, Hadassah can you, you say um, yes. what, what, your, what your intention and expectation is today? Well, well I love What's anything that has to do with psychology, or anything to do with art and colors. So I'm just here to learn. Excellent. Excellent. Um, as I was hoping that we that Dinah would be here, um, I'm not quite sure because she booked early. Um, I'm not quite sure where she is. So at least we have recording. Uh, so if I may, thank you for that um, introduction to yourself. I'm going to share the screen and and go through a few ideas that will bring us into the into the into the motion of what we're talking about. Um, so can you see my screen, everybody? Yes. Excellent. So this is our starting place. Um, and I just want to share this idea that it's a unique approach to leadership, but it's, it's an, a, a unique approach to life. Um, we're exploring who you are. And in style, color, shape, and scale, we'll, we'll reference all those things. But it's really thinking about what do you look like, feel like, sound like? What, what words and deeds come over? How does that attach to your uh, emotional template and also you, the actual physical impact you have in the world? Uh, as, as we've explained, I'm Dr. Pauline Crawford, Christine Baron. Christine's company is Painting Your Heart Workshops, and I run a company called Corporate Heart, so we can see the connection. Uh, the heart of matters, and I always ask people, you know, who's in charge of your life? Are you in charge of it? And this is a very simple philosophy that works for everything that I do. This is, program is about you, the me in you. The me factor is not a selfish pursuit. It's not an ego pursuit. It's a, a an honorable respecting yourself so that when you're in relationships with other people, you can understand what's going on. So as we explore in the first section of our program, who you are in color, shape and scale, We'll later on look at how do you see other people? And that, I always say, is the superpower that we have. How do we relate to people who are not the same as us? Because then we create the we. And the we is bigger than the you and me. And that's why I love the word synergy, because it's it's all the parts together. It's everything that comes into place. So it might be in the workplace. It might be in the family. It could be in the community. It could be in associations. It could be in nation states. It could be across a continent. But it all starts with me. It starts with how we feel about ourselves. What's the value? And I just place a few ideas. We are unique and different. And I believe that women empower men, men empower women. It's not just about women empowerment. But there are some uh, unique difficulties in the world about misunderstanding. And my passion is to make a language in deeds and words. So body language, real words, the way we we use our perspectives, how do we find authentic harmony? So authentic harmony is our end goal and to be complementary and complementary. Those two things sometimes are missing in the world. And the mission is authentic harmony and something called joint custody world, which we'll come to at the end and maybe discuss. Once we know each self, ourselves, how do we create communities that understand men and women and it's not just men and women, but men and women of different generations, different sexual preferences, different cultures, different religions. How do we manage difference? How do we create harmony? And I want you to think about maybe in your life where there's been dissonance, uh, disharmony, where there's been difficulties. Why do I just not tune into that person? How does that impact how I feel? But also how does it impact the result of what I want to do with that person. And if it's business, then it's going to impact my life. I love this quote from Einstein, is that we cannot solve problems at the same level of thinking that we were at when we created these problems. And we have created a lot of problems in the world between men and women and differences and difficulties and, and arguing and, and sadly war. Um, so we are looking at, in principle, how do we look at the world through a woman-centric lens and always invite men to that success? So we are, as I said, you know, we're unique and different. Um, and 
my goal is that we understand that it's more effective to be in harmony because that makes sense. So I want you also to be thinking towards the end about where does it not work and how do I make it work? And also the principle that we don't need to make it work with absolutely everybody. The more we tune into ourselves, the more we can spread that um, ability to understand people who are very different to us. So to me, the benefits are synergy, it's understanding uh, people's unique traits and creating that productive, harmonious result. Now, the traditional view of men and women, and we are focused on that in this instance, to get a baseline. The traditional way of looking at men and women is that you know men are very, uh, very task focused and straight line communication, and the world has been built on that principle. But women are much more curvy, they're much more menstrual, much more hormonal, uh, hormonal as opposed to harmonious. Um, and the world has been built on a very transactional basis. So I think, and you may agree or disagree, but that's the way the world is. And women have come in with multiple aspects of life to deal with. Now we've got a world where we've been through COVID, we've been through changes. Now we're in a very tricky time in the world where we really need to get together, but it's not to become the same. And I think this is really important by understanding our differences. The differences make the magic that makes the synergy and the harmony work. If we were all the same, we would be clones. And we don't want that to happen, me personally. I think our uniqueness that we are born with is what we need to master. Now, if we take that same thought that biologically, physically, uh, emotionally, there are differences between men and women. And this is what I based my study on over my lifetime, but definitely the last 30 years. When I was in that image world, I started seeing these differences. And I recognized that men were very linear. So that they're generally, and there's a lot of um, brain scans and, and evidence to this effect that men work on a very yes, no, regular line, square basis. Now, it doesn't mean that all of you are the same. So if men and women are different, not all men are the same, and not all women are the same. So when I looked at the evidence, it would seem that women were much more relational. And this evidence was based on a lot of biological, physicality aspects. We have a different uh, body function. We have a different, um, if you like, life journey. And that is to be acknowledged. But again, remembering we're not all the same. And my challenge was for myself to understand who I was. I know I was a woman. Um, I happened to be heterosexual. It doesn't matter if I was homosexual or trans or anything. That's not the point. For me, it was who is a human being standing in this place? and understanding each other. So I recognize that I actually had a lot of masculine logic in me. And I recognize that I had a similarity to some men who had very logical masculine energy. So what I'm looking at masculine energy is different to being male and female. And we can we will talk about that as we go forward. But this was the basic preposition because I realized if you had a masculine male there was some ruler energy to him. Whereas I was sitting in a magician position. Now, as we go forward in this workshop, we're gonna to get to know these archetypes more, but this is the first time you might be seeing them. These are two similarities and not based on biology. So the magician and the ruler could have some very similar traits and we will unpack that as we go forward. But the other side of the coin is that people have a very feminine mind, and I'm qualifying that by being intuitive, very feeling, very circular, that we can also see that in men and in women. So I thought, yes, I can now understand the women who are not the same as me, as I stand in that magician place. And as I looked at men that I knew, I could see that there was the, if you like, the, the masculine-minded ruler, the action man, bullet point, when is it going to happen? Tell me now. And I saw the philosopher. In fact, I have two brothers, and one is a ruler, one is a philosopher. And where I saw the difference is my other brother was much more uh, internal focused, was thinking, feeling, asking why, whereas the ruler was asking when. 
And I recognized in myself, I was always into concepts and ideas of what we're going to do next. And my sister, who my real sister, as well as all my sisters, as a sovereign, was asking who, who's going to be doing this for me? Who am I? So I started looking at conversation styles. The ruler was very direct. When is it going to happen? The magician was asking what, 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 what? A lot of concepts. The sovereign was very circular. He was asking who's going to be in this team? Who's going to be with me? And as we play out these in, in color, shape and scale, we'll see some relationship between the energy. So the philosopher here, and we've got Mark and we'll say, and think about where you feel the energy. So the, the difference between the philosopher and the ruler is the philosopher is very internal, asking why, asking several questions, lots of questions, actually feeling more in tune to what is presumably the feminine female side of the map. Um, but the ruler can also be very wise. So it's not that the ruler doesn't ask the question why, but he starts with the more uh, distinct action focused words. So we actually call this gender dynamics intelligence. And Christine will explain more, but we have actually taken the prompts of our archetypes. And Christine very, very brilliantly put them into AI and AI took them into illustration. So to get us into the conversation, this was what AI produced for the ruler. This is what AI produced for the philosopher. And this is what AI produced for the magician. And this is what AI produced for the sovereign. And I remember our goal is to get everybody into a conversation. So that center point that you see there in the middle is where our goal is. But let's just focus on these four illustrations. As you look at them, I would love you to look at them a little bit closer. And now it's not that you have to paint yourself exactly like these characters, but I want you to take a look at, as you stare at these four, and the reason I designed only four archetypes is to actually make it simple. Now I want to make a caveat that it doesn't mean that all rulers are the same or all philosophers are the same, all magicians the same, someone, but there are baseline characteristics. Now, I want you to think about how these four are looking at you. Do you observe that the ruler and the magician are very direct in their focus? Whereas the philosopher and the sovereign are looking away, although they're looking at you as well. There's a softness to the two at the bottom and a slightly sharper to the top. So if we actually remember that the ruler is very direct, you may be a wise ruler. A ruler can be philosophizing, doesn't mean he's a philosopher. I would explore this more. The, philosopher, the magician always asks what? That doesn't mean she can't be gentle on occasion, but her primary focus is what? What are you doing? What are we... What, what are we going to do next? The philosopher is going to be generally asking why, even now in your head, as a man, you might be thinking, no, I'm asking why more. And the sovereign is asking who? Who is this really about? Who's going to be there for me? So the way to get started is to quit talking and begin doing, which we're going to do just in a minute. But remember that knowing yourself is the first step to then knowing others. So our first exercise is going to be getting to know ourselves. And then we'll compare and contrast and see what's happening. And our goal is always to get into harmony. So whatever you say or whatever you feel, whatever you want to share, there's no judgment. We're not going to get angry about anything. We're not going to be saying, oh, no, no, you've got to be this or that. It's really an exploration into yourself, into your feelings with no judgment, no anger, no cursion. This is our mission. So let's, before we step into our first exercise, remind ourselves, we have four archetypes. The two on the left are male, the two on the right are female. The two at the top are more masculine energy, the two at the bottom are more feminine energy. And we see that portrayed in various simple traits. So the ruler loves order, action, solutions. 
Whereas the philosopher loves people, creativities and synergy. There's more sensitivity there. But remember, they're both task focused. My son is a ruler and my son-in-law is a philosopher. And when you see the two guys go out for a drink together, you might think they're the same, but their traits, in, especially under stress, are different. The ruler will go, oh, I've had enough, I'm gone. The philosopher will hide inside and often get more concerned. Same with our two beautiful women. The magician, she loves ideas, collaboration, innovation. She's upward focused. You have to decide what you think I am. Um, and then you've got the sovereign, again, more internal feelings, purpose, community. She wants to build her castle. Now, the thing to remember as we go into our exercise, and Christine's going to take us into the energy and feelings of this, we're looking for your core preference place. We've got two men here. We've got two, three of us females. We're looking at our biology and then our energy. We can do and manage all the other traits, but we're looking for the core. What is the one that under stress is the most important one to you? So there's lots of thoughts in there and images and styles. So Christine's going to actually take us now into how we take these into color, shape and scale. Christine. Yes. Anyway, thank you, Pauline. That was beautifully set up. And uh, I'm excited to take you through this interesting visualization and creativity exercise. Um, so how it's going to work is I'm going to be giving you some verbal prompts to guide you through two different exercises to help you tap into, visualize, and express who you are as a leader. The intent is to embody the essence of your type. So you want to capture the energy of that core version of you in color, shape, and scale. So what I mean by that, as I give you the prompt, and by the way, we're gonna start with just a calming visualization breathing exercise. We'll just kind of get you into the space. But I want you to drop from your head into your heart and really listen and feel my words as opposed to mentalizing them. This is a heart-centered feeling energy that you're going to tap into. So it's all about abstract strokes, lines, mark making. Um, it's not a realistic interpretation. We're not looking for fine art. We're not looking for a masterpiece. We're not looking for necessary stick figures, but if that's the only way that you can communicate it, feel free. But I want you to sort of tap into the energy of color, into marks. Are your marks bold, deliberate, direct, um, intense, or are they soft, curved, subtle? There's all different ways that you can put color paint, crayons, whatever you have. By the way, does everybody have their creative materials in front of them and ready to go? Yes? Okay. All right. So I want you, when you hear my words, to feel them and to allow your spontaneous, intuitive self pick up a tool and start creating without thinking about it. There's no judgment here. There's no right or wrong. So let's begin um, with a calming visualization. So I'd like you to close your eyes. Put your feet on the floor. And if you can, get comfortable in your seat. Feel yourself very present in the moment. Let's take in a deep breath slowly. And exhale 
Drop your shoulders, feel your body kind of sitting in your chair. One more deep inhale and exhale, fully relaxed, present and calm. Okay, now keep your eyes closed as we begin the first exercise. Imagine yourself walking into a room. Get a visual image of you as a leader. And now focus on the traits, define your type. Visualize the various hues and tones of your archetype. So the ruler is red, philosopher is blue, sovereign is green, magician is gold. Focus on those colors and all the various tones and hues of those colors. There's lighter pastel versions. There's heavier, darker versions. There's red can be burgundy. Red can be coral. There's so many different shades of red and the kinds of marks that you can make. Keep in mind your own body shape and your size as you visualize the power of your presence. That's it, it's the energy that you feel when you walk into the room and what kind of impact you're making on people. It's based on how you see yourself and then translating that visual image into color shapes on your paper. There's no right or wrong. I just want you to capture the energy of the true you. Now open your eyes and begin to express how that looks like as you are walking into a room being you. When you're ready, begin.
So I just want to check in and see how, how um, we are doing. And if you need another minute, two minutes, you can just give me a thumbs up or thumbs down. Okay. Who say? More time? Okay, we're ready? Okay. All right, yeah. so now what we're going to do is we're just gonna go around the screen and you're gonna hold up your art and share whatever you wanna share about the marks, the colors, and maybe the why behind what you've created. So who would like to go first? Have a volunteer. Okay, Mark. So I am I just to be completely transparent, I am not an artist at okay. all. At Good all. Luck. Um <clears throat> so I guess what, what resonates with me on this right here is Oh wow. So I'm I'm a speaker and I uh, I influence people, I train people, I educate, motivate, and inspire people. But at my core, while the red is that it's that ruler, the ruler is tempered by the philosopher. And I will tell you from my own past, my mother and father were totally opposite. My mother truly was the disciplinarian, the ruler, and my dad had a very um, a soft nature about him. And so throughout my life, I have seen these forces at play. And um, this would have ordinarily been all blue. And it wasn't until actually I did some work with Hadassah that really helped me to reclaim uh, the ruler who I knew, who I wasn't, sh I, I actually, I didn't see the ruler in me, but through working with Adasa and working through our past, I realized, oh no, I've, there are very strong ruler characteristics there. I do love order, but yet I, I love working with people. And so there's this balance going on. And so up here, it's the two forces at play. Beautiful. Yeah, That's so I want to just, yeah, can you hold it up again? Because I want to just share a little bit. So like you said, there's balance. So each color is equal play here. Mm -hmm. And I love that you have decided that the ruler is your core being. Yet, like Pauline said, we all have traits of the others, but you are able to go internally you're able to have empathy you're able to have that understanding but it's really the ruler it's the red that's at the is holding you up is the shoulders right so i would see like the shoulders are the red so you're claiming ruler but then there mm -hmm. is this feminine soft side and it's beautiful there's nothing bold there's nothing harsh there's nothing um uh, heavily intense about it mm -hmm. there's there's a softness but you're also claiming ruler in in the just as you explained it you were like you had a bit of both and in doing the work with Hadassah you were able to say yes this is who I am so that's a beautiful it's like a, almost like a slip split personality right, right. <laughs> but right. in essence it's just so beautiful in the execution and i commend you on on claiming claiming ruler and saying that's me so and we always clap after everybody share so let's just do that thank you thank you, thank you for it. sharing so pauline would you like to say anything um no i i think i'd, I'd like to to um come back at the end when we with you oh come back at the end too. okay I've All right. Who would what's going on? I'd like to know how Mose. What what did yes. you do? 
mine is quite quite kind of simple um you know i i'm like a, a yellow on the top that is can like you hold I, it closer to your body so we can i'm thinking if you hold it back how about now okay i see circles of okay circles of color it's circles like when i'm entering uh that is an indicator a yellow surrounded with uh, another color green and blue uh i'm walking into that predicament but i'm going into it with the with a you know a mind in finding best resolution to that situation and instead of like you know uh you know having that thought of uh, ruling or making hard decisions you know okay so and i'm coming out uh with the red uh, that signify ruler right but when I'm walking in on the top, what you see is a yellow on a mixture of green and blue. Okay, but at, at the core or say at, in your heart, you are a ruler. My heart, primarily I'm walking with a great deal of empathy and uh, oh, compassion empathy. For that, you know, scenario. And you wore a red shirt today. Yes. <laughs> I'm a colorful guy. I like colors. <laughs> okay. So at your core, who which type are you? Uh I'm I'm uh, I'm looking towards maybe the between the magician and the philosopher. <laughs> Where do you classify me, Dr. Pauline? <laughs> yes. Um I I I I I'm I'm, I'm intrigued with both the drawings, um, Mark and Mose as the, the men on the call. Um, so with Mose, yours are all circles and multiple colors. I love that. It, it um, would you say you're an action, an action man, or a thinker feeler? I think I'm kind of an action person, right? What do you think? from our like engagements and you know well, in, you in, find? because you in, know sometimes in, you don't see your your, your yourself and, and then make that decision in the basis of your own thoughts but when you're engaging with people and people that experience you know your way of doing things maybe you may have uh, you know an idea where we will be i'll be classified well that's why i ask you know if you had to choose one or the other which one would you save? Would you save the action man or the thinker feeler? I think an, maybe an action man. Okay, so I'd like to ask Mark the same question. If you only had one choice, which one would you pick? The action man or the thinker feeler? Uh, we can't hear you, Mark. can't hear you. Thinker, feeler. Can you hear me now? Yeah, now we can hear you. Okay. Yeah, the thinker, feeler. Yes. My, my my intuitive sense is that in curacy, and you can think about it, is that Mark is the philosopher and, and Mose is the ruler. Having said that, you're both at the point where you've blended the, the experience because you're both men. Um, and it's like when... In my experience of philosophers who say to me, oh, yes, but on occasion I could be a ruler. I said, that's being a man. So you've got to remember that the baseline of being a man is being task focused. Um, and the baseline of a woman is, is different. So that's why I asked you that either or question. Because when we're more aware, we want to capture all of it. And in fact, as aware people, we can do many, many things. But it's what happens when we're under stress. What happens when you have to make that critical decision of one thing or the other. So as a philosopher, Mark, you can obviously rule, and that's been some of your journey, is how can I be a man in my culture, in this, you know, because men are strong and tough, and, you know, there's, there's, there's pressures on men to be certain things as there are women to be certain things. Um, but, and I've only met you today, but there's also a sort of physicality that, and we'll say I do know better. We've met many times. 
and you're a very aware philosophizing person but i do feel you're a ruler because you love action and that though when we ask the priority question that's when we get our energy so um let's ask hadassah what she drew and i'll show you what i drew hadassah by the way thank you Sue, for sharing yes because i know this is this is this is wonderful this, this is just being vulnerable and yeah. saying, hey, I'm not an artist and and I'm just going to I'm going to put it out there. But there's beauty in everybody's art. And I just want to say one more time to your piece. In your heart, you're a ruler because that's what you made. That color, that circle in the middle is red. Yes. So like Dr. Pauline said, at your core. And that doesn't mean, you know, you don't show up in all these other ways, but when you know part of my french the shit hits the fan how are you show how are you showing up what what is what is that beingness of you so uh, again the red shirt i i don't think that was a mistake so <laughs> anyway thank you hadassa okay <laughs> so here's a funny thing i am an artist but this does not represent me being the artist that i am Wonderful. Um, so this is what I drew. Ooh. Okay. So tell us about that. I don't know why I drew a really tiny person in such a big piece of paper. Um, and then there's the yellow glowing the little person is yellow inside, but the shell is red. And those are the only two colors that I felt drawn to. Mm -hmm. So as you reflected on that core type, yellow references the magician. Mm -hmm. So do you think you can tell us a little bit more? Mm -hmm. Also, again, the shape and the scale and you know the amount of space that you used on the paper you know mm -hmm. where you position that anything else you might want to reflect yeah. on yeah sure um i pretty much always feel small but then again i am a small statured person <laughs> however um there's always magic with when i do things there's always that i i'm very creative and I like to solve problems. Um, but also I have to carry this um, hard shell. Um, in order to survive. Mm -hmm. You know, when life hits me, it's mm -hmm. like I have to be a ruler. I have to like do um that's the protection right. being a ruler protects me but in the core of everything i am a magician mm, that's beautiful because again where you put it on the paper i see that white space just infinite possibility for that yellow that shape of yellow to grow and to expand yeah. and yes. i don't like all eyes on me i really don't like all the focus on me I don't care it I would rather do magic behind the scenes mm. beautiful that's beautiful mm -hmm. one of the things I was going to say and uh, getting to know you recently as well Adasa, and we met in person yes and, <laughs> and, and you're a petite person um I mean well how tall are you you know you're um, I'm five one. I used to be five two. <laughs> <laughs> well, I I used to be five five, and I'm five four and a half now. But in and this is where it's interesting because I'm a magician, and in the minutes, Christine will share with us about her. But as a magician, and you're the magician, we're different. And this is the thing where we get our head around these archetypes are um, baseline uh, core behavior traits and often it's about our reactive behavior trait 
So I often find when people are aware and they're more excited about their own self, they tend to feel that they can do everything. Oh, I'm all of the archetypes. So I always ask, you know, what is the focus when something's going wrong? And what happens with, you know, what you've just explained, Hadassah, is that you feel small. And yes, you are a small scale. And often in a room, especially of a room full of men, they'll be much taller than you or bigger than you. Um, and they're, um, I'm average height, but I've got very heavy, solid bones. Um, I have a stronger uh, energy presence in a room than somebody the same height as me who's much slimmer or tinier. So scale makes a big impact, and it's only part of the archetype, but it's a collection of the whole archetype. And like you said, what I love about your little red character <laughs> Is that it's got all this yellow, it's got this expansion because yellow is optimism, is ideas, it's 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 shining, it's bright. Yeah. And you're and you're very exact as that little red person. Because you, you're <laughs> extremely good at and, and Mark knows you well obviously as well, but but she's very good at organizing and, and you're so efficient and show on the ball. Um I think the thing that I've learned about the archetypes is that, um, and it's like, I think, um, most of you said, oh, well, I want to be the magician, magician and the ruler or something like that. We, we can be b both, but we really want to focus on one. And the reason that there's only two, there's two that are male and two that are female is to be able to, to have a, a, a quick way of assessing when we get to look at other people as well. Mm -hmm. So you you can be a magician and have a soft side. You can be a philosopher and be able to rule. You can be a ruler and be able to philosophize. You can be a sovereign and be bits of magic as well. But it's really that, that bottom line. So when you said yes, at the core, I like to make magic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> At, at the core, the sovereign wants to do different things. So we can find out about that because, but before we do, I want to see if I can show you my picture. <laughs> see if I can get it in here. Hang on a second, I'm going to just take this off. Because I want to explain, I've not done this exercise before. I mean, I draw lots of things, but um, just generally, I did it taking Christine's prompts. Okay. So, all right. so I want to explain as a magician, I started with all the straight lines. So my first lines were the two down the middle. And then I thought my female bit came in, not my feminine, but my female bit came in and said, oh, I need some curves. But notice that my lines are very strong. Um, and then the very last thing I did, I did this top thing here, which was very, look at me, look at me, look at me. But this this curly bit here, what I did was I got all the crayons together and I suddenly thought, well. <laughs> so I wanted to share that process to me because that is, it's very typically magician. It was like um, when I doodle, I start with some strong shape and then I go around it, doodle, 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 making it patterns. So a lot of what I see is patterns. Okay. It's almost like pixie dust. You got all your, you, know, you just created magic around your body. Yeah, yeah. I know. Movement. It's, Movement. It's, very, Movement. it's very stable, goes out. It's very stable. So I I didn't know, I didn't know I was going to produce that. I just wanted to explain that because it, it was a very good exercise for me. Um, and I've only got crayons, so the lines are not any stronger. Mm -hmm. But I think that was really good. So I love the fact that Hadassah, yours showed your scale. Yes, so beautiful. If I could go back to you, you're also fully contained within that yellow. So mm -hmm. you've got clarity on who you are, right? Not I, also yeah. the size, right? You've got the size, but the possibility of, of growing, evolving, expanding is infinite because you've you've centered on that on that paper you're centered in life so that anything is possible that's the beauty of it that's the that's the magic 
that you put in your piece and we didn't get to clap for you. So again, oh, that's thank okay. You. Yeah, no, 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 we always clap. And Dr. Pauline, thank, thank you. you. Well, I was just, I wanted to ask Mark just before we go to you, Christine. So Mark, with yours, you've built up the whole page. Are you, are you a tall person? Can't hear. He's, he's a giant next to me. Um, I'm six <laughs> feet tall and I have a bigger than life personality in groups of people. I, I will be the center of attention. I, I, yes. I'm, I claim the whole, I use, when I'm speaking, I claim the whole stage. If I'm training, <laughs> I'm throughout the whole room. Um, and I'm always looking to not leave anyone behind. Mm. Now, now, just note that word. Note what Mark said. I don't leave anybody behind. Yes. That's fair. Yeah, and that's a very philosopher point of view. It, the, to me, that's a strong philosopher. So I hope you like the person I always quote as a philosopher in our world is Nelson Mandela. Mm. Absolutely. Um, and the thing is, I got to, before we go to Christine, we all have good traits. And so when you look at the four archetypes, they're all needed and they're all glorious. So we need the wise ruler. We need the ma magical magician. We need the sensitive sovereign. We need the, the people philosopher. We need all these things. Um, and it, it, there's no, there's no, um, we can all be bad as well. <laughs> so, you know, yeah. I have a question for you. Um, I know that in psychology, uh, clinical psychology, it's said that um, who we are is, is blueprinted between the ages of zero and seven. Yes. Is there a correlation with archetypes to how young, how old do, how, when, do arch, when do archetypes form? Well, I, I personally believe, and you know, I, I, this is my view, that we are born with our archetype because we're born with our body. <laughs> And there is this great connection of our physicality. So when we look at our, our colouring, our shape and our scale, um, you know, what we're born with is, is the blueprint for everything. So you look at the playground. So the ruler boy is typically very active. He's the action boy. Um, and when he's restless, he's always kicking something. Uh, when the philosopher little boy, he's the one who is more observing of people. He could still be a good footballer. My grandson is a philosopher. He was a great footballer, but he wasn't the tough footballer. He was the, uh, the sort of wise footballer. He was always midfield. He wasn't a, a striker. There were little traits. So it's, it is a, a simple complexity that we're looking at. And what we're born with, I believe, is what we need to nurture. And often it gets wiped, wiped out of school or by parents uh, with love or not with love. But I believe that, you know, I've got the body I was born with. Um, and as I got to understand it, that's what happened when I was doing my image work. I saw patterns. I saw the, the women and the men who were more angular were always of the masculine energy. And the ones who had softer bones or softer features were of the gentler um, archetypes. But if you like, we can all be, we can all be different levels of greatness. So if you look at the the kids um, going wrong in the playground, the, the little the ruler might be the little boy who's always kicking, and then the philosopher's the one that disappears under the table, and the teacher can't get them out to say anything. Um, the princess sovereign and the tomboy magician, you know, these are the kind of the classics, but all of them have. Um, magical i'm uh, careful the word magical because a magician but we all have a, a a wide range of who we can be within our archetype and the reason why we only have four because one could have i know you said you haven't done anything with archetypes before mark but uh, caroline mice has 86 archetypes you know you can have hundreds of archetypes well, we chose four in order to to be able to channel this um, energy into conversation Yes. Are are there any combinations of archetypes that potentially don't serve us? Uh, well, in terms of other people, 
in terms of how, how we relate to, to stress and, and situate different situations, who we show up in, in, in intimate personal relationships or business relationships, are there, I don't, I don't know enough about it. I, I'm just, th this is the philosopher in me trying yes. to figure, figure out, you know, right. are there, are there combinations but, that don't serve us and, and can we, who, yes. who do, we, yeah, who do the, we have to become to, to have that awareness? Like how, how can you get that? Oh, you know what? Wait, this, this isn't serving me. I'm going to this space and I really should be taking action because it's great to talk about things and <laughs> what you're going to do. But if you don't take action, nothing gets done. Well, that that's right. And and I think the, the, the thing is that there are, we can all do, we can all act. So I'll come back there to you in a minute. I'm just going to, I'm, I'm thinking while I'm speaking, but uh, I know musa has got his hand up, so I'm going to ask you what it is. But we, we can all do everything. What we're looking at here is what's really core, because the core is going to guide us to do all the other things. Mm -hmm. Musa, you've got your hand up. I was just going to add to the, what Mark was uh, saying. I know you said that, like, you, you, I mean, these archetypes are like, uh, you were born with it, right? But in many instances also, you get to observe. Uh, let's say I grew up in Ethiopia, right? And then predominantly, you see these archetypes uh, on, on the man side as a ruler because they're the one, the breadwinners and so forth. So you see that. And then those people, when they happen to come to the U.S. and then start, uh, you know, uh, assimilating and, then, you know, coming to a new norm, you see a huge shift in their archetypes. But I've seen it in numerous situations. Not only like I'm just, you know, giving an instance of an Ethiopian demographic, but sometimes environment also can can uh, you know uh, change your archetypes as you you know you know change, uh, norms or you know what, what I'd like to do, well, I want I'd, I want Christine to explain because she's going yes. to yes. so it's really... one of the things that's to be aware of we're not we're not um, when we present ourselves looking like something else we're not necessarily changing from our baseline that's just the point is that. Um, if I'm a magician and Hadassah is a magician and we're different, those differences are within the magician quadrant. Um, there was It's really looking at core behavior. So I'm from a different generation to all of you, I think. <laughs> but, you know, with generational differences, cultural differences, experience differences, um, you know, the, the, all those differences, like your birthday difference, you know, we look at our horoscopes and we say, oh, we're like this. Um, the card destinies, everything. So what we're looking at is not separating all those things. They're all part of who we are. But going back to Mark's question, I do believe that we start our life with everything that we have. And that what we're doing is we're we're unfolding it. We're discovering more. We're, 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 we're polishing up the stone and, and acquiring all sorts of experiences and extra traits and things like that um and so one of the things i suggest is we see the archetype especially in our stress point mm -hmm. when we're under pressure we go to our corner and that's where then that helps us to come out of our corner and manage whatever difficulties are going on mm -hmm. so so um christine explain your archetype um yeah i first of all i didn't do uh, a painting but um, I am a sovereign. I am all about who's who's going to be part of this journey, this experience. Um, nurturing, touching, feeling, heart centered, bringing the community, creating magnificent events, and as many people as possible to participate. I love collaboration, which is that stepping into the magician thing but i'm all about creating an experience that's nurturing and bringing everybody in 
So various shades of green and yellow. Um, I would have just done probably many different, um, first of all, I've got an actual painting here. Um, I don't know if you can see this. This is a painting I did in my training um, that's got purples and greens. Um, yes, that's the sovereign. I'm not, I'm not that direct, head on, straightforward, take action now person. I've got to mull it over. I've got to internalize. I've got to do the touchy feely thing. And how is it going to work? And who's part of it? Yes, a lot of internalizing. And then I get to the point where, okay, now it's time to move. But I've got, I've got all the details all lined up and I'm ready. And, and that's a key, yeah, that's a key word for all of you to remember. Listen to what people say. Remember that Hadassah said, although I'd like to do the magic, and Christine mentioned detail. And Mark said, I'd like to make sure everybody's involved and Fussy says action. Our words give us away, like visual auditory and kinesthetic. We have a baseline. But because we're all bright and intelligent and aware people, we can look like lots of different things. Mm -hmm. um, just a, a, a quick before we go to Hadassah, she got oh, I put a wig on yesterday. I was given a wig for Halloween. And this wig, um, I have to send you a picture, this wig was long. It was it was silver, so it was the same colour, but it was long. And I posted it up on Facebook and everybody said, oh, that's so you. And I thought, that's so interesting because it's different, but it's not me. So it, it's like ownership of, of who you are. Um, as a woman, I'm a mother and a grandmother. I can step into my sovereignty, but it doesn't mean I'm a sovereign. I hope mm -hmm. this, this starts to layer in. Hadassah, you have your hand up. So um, the ruler was forced on me. Mm. Mm -hmm. It was forced on me. And it was um, for survival purposes. And when I see it, I'm okay with it. But at the end of the day, I don't like it. Mm -hmm. I only want to be a magician. And that's it. Mm -hmm. The ruler aspect, it's like, to me, it's so heavy. But it's what's allowed me to be able to survive. Mm -hmm. So I don't really like it that much. I don't. But I know I have to embrace it in order to survive and get things done. Mm -hmm. and, and it's almost like that the ruler is a tool for me. It's just a tool to make things happen and get them done and survive and and be able to just go on with life mm -hmm. but if circumstances were different i would just be a magician all all day long and okay. not have to deal with anything else <laughs> so that's, what, what that's an interesting point if i could speak to that yeah. so a big part of painting your heart is also journaling you know when we do our painting sometimes before we do our share we go into journaling so to speak to your point that would be an interesting exercise to start to just journal about what you just said about that ruler in you and what it has provided you, helped you, how it's guided you, and thank it maybe. Thank you for the presence of being there. And maybe in that journaling, the actual size of it, well, maybe it'll get smaller. Maybe it'll not be as bold in color. Maybe it'll be lighter. Maybe it'll eventually will just kind of dissolve into the yellow. Yeah. The ruler to me is like wearing an armor, you know, like, mm, and it's very, very heavy. It's very yeah. heavy, but I, I carry it even though it's heavy and it's okay I, because it protects me, but it is a lot of work. Mm -hmm. And because I'm a magician, I'm able to carry it. Oh, yes. Wow. That's beautiful. Yeah, I, I think I think this is, it's very important that we again, if you w visualize these four, they're in a circle, so they're not just four distinct points; they're they're quadrants. Um, 
So I, you know, I use a, a map word and I say everybody who's breathing is in the map. So we're all in there somewhere. Mm -hmm. And the archetype gives us a baseline in which to explore all the other facets. So what I'm intrigued with is uh, for you, Hadassah, saying, um, I don't like being the ruler. And yet, essentially, you're not having to be the ruler. It's it's that influence that came into your life that you didn't like. Um, let me just give a quick story. My, my son is a ruler. And I can see where he and I relate through our masculine energy. And then, interesting enough, we got similar traits. My daughter is a magician, but understanding him as a as a ruler really helped me to understand his need for simplicity and action when he's in a box. So when he's in that topic box and he's talking, actually very emotionally, uh, he could be on the stage speaking. He's he's a he's not a speaker, but he's a DJ. And when he's DJing, he's the master of the room. He's in that space of of uh, display but he's always in a box of something so if I try and have a conversation with him moving him to another box that he's not interested in he doesn't want to go there mm -hmm. now that's really classic ruler that you may come across where somebody is so focused on one topic whereas the philosopher can move more easily from box to box mm -hmm. but they're still in boxes and the same is true with magician and sovereign, that the, the sovereign is collecting everything into her space and the magician is trying to throw them up like this. <laughs> <laughs> so when we use these words, ruler, philosopher, magician, sovereign, as our core space to start, because we're going to start looking at how do we relate to other people, to stop the confusion is to understand that you are just a magician. I don't mean just Hadassah, but that is your your glow place. And interesting, your picture was all glowing, <laughs> you know. And and oh, and I, I know about you, Mark. Now with your picture, I see you on that stage. That's you on the stage, but you're embracing everybody. You've got the blue and the red and the, that that total balance. But it's 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 not. Um, it's much more about embracing everybody. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think with um, Musse, with yours, it's fascinating because you had those four different colours, didn't you? But they were quite distinct. Mm -hmm. They weren't all blended together. Whereas Mark's was more blended. Yes, Mark. can hear you. So it's gone. How about now? Can you hear me now? Now, yes. So an observation I'm making from this is being being the philosopher and in my, whether I'm a parent or a speaker or doesn't matter who I'm communicating, even communicating with myself, having this knowledge allows me to allow others to step into their, to have more space to be that architect, the archetype that that they are at their core. Far too often, um, and I've I've noticed noticed this in my own life, my need to get my message out. You know, I could step all over a ruler or a sovereign or any of the four ar archetypes just to be right. But I'm, I'm getting from this when you've not only when you not only have your own self awareness but you're aware of the archetypes and others you can create balance harmony uh for the room to step into more of the archetype that they are and and so doing you're building rapport because now they feel comfortable to be who they are they feel heard a lot of yes. A lot of us don't, we don't necessarily, we're hurt. Sometimes we're not seen. We feel that we're not seen. And uh, it's, just, it's just a very interesting observation. I, I didn't think I would be getting this much this soon into it. I'm really glad I'm here. Oh, that's great. Well, yeah. I, the, 
Yeah, the other illustration I want to say is the orchestra. Christy and I often talk about this, is we're all parts of the orchestra. So, you know, we, like, if you're playing the strings, if you're playing the violin, some violins are louder than others. There's different tonal values inside each part, even with the percussion and that there are different sounds, but we know it's percussion. And we know that's the uh, brass section and we know that's the woodwind section. And that's what we're talking about is, is our ability to ground ourselves in our archetype and then look out to the others. Um, now, I just had a call from Dinah who um, just woke up. She, she said she doesn't know what happened, but she may join us. So when she comes in, uh, we'll catch up with her and... and um, just so you know, but um, do you Chris, want to go into the second prompt now? Yes, because yeah. we're going to look at how do we get on with other people? How do we yes. see other people? OK, so gather you your will. second piece of paper and your tools so that we can do the second piece. And when you have that ready, we're going to just close our eyes and take a breathing break for for a mm -hmm. moment. So get comfortable in your seat, feet on the ground, feel yourself in the chair, deep breath in and exhale. Just feel your body relax. One more deep breath in slowly and relax, feeling the stillness in the moment. Okay, now keeping your eyes closed. Now we'd like you to focus on one of the other three archetypes. Choose a team member, colleague, friend, anyone you work with who's different from you. Perhaps it's someone you find challenging. Visualize how they show up as a leader based on your perception of them. Keep in mind the philosopher is blue, magician gold, sovereign green. As you focus on their individual type, imagine the different hues and tones of color, as well as their shapes and the marks that represent how you experience them. Capture their energy in colors and marks the intent is to get to know them and their style with the ultimate goal of learning how to create harmony in that relationship. Okay, open your eyes, pick up your tools and express this other individual. Question? The For some reason this goes off.
Christine, those colors again, the, the magician is blue? No, yellow. The magician is yellow, gold, yeah. yeah. Um, sovereign is green, philosopher blue, and ruler red. Hi, Dinah. Hi there, Dinah. Hello. <laughs> oh, we, hi, Dinah. We're, we're just doing a, a drawing exercise here, which um, Christine has led us into. But just let yourself settle and be with us. I'm here. I've just written some notes to you, Dinah, just to explain what we're doing. Wonderful. On the chat. Okay, I see a few of you are finished. Let me know if you need another minute. And I was going to suggest if um, if, uh, if if Dino, you're up to showing yourself, we'll explain. What <laughs> <laughs> So oh, welcome, Dinah. Welcome, Dinah. <laughs> uh, you obviously needed your sleep, my darling. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But uh, we're delighted that you're here. And um, yes. Dinah is a friend of mine here in Las Vegas, and she runs a very wonderful business uh, for a company called Roland Fields. And uh, you're interacting with people a lot, yes. 
Well, so, you'll glean a lot from the recording. Yes, I will so, watch that. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah. So what we've done is we've all drawn, um, we've drawn ourselves as our own archetypes. So um, and maybe um, we've, you and I have talked a lot about archetypes and, um, um, and maybe um, the rest of you would like to introduce yourself quickly to Diana as your archetype. Would yeah. anybody like to do that? Really good idea. Before we go into the second piece, would you, Hadassah, would you like to share? <laughs> Me? Oh, I'll share it. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. So tell us, tell us more who it is and what you've done. And okay. So now it all makes sense. My cousin Mark. He is a philosopher, okay? And the way that we interact and we communicate, he allows me to put down the ruler in me. Like, it's almost like I don't have to carry that, the ruler thing so much. So I can just put it aside for a little bit and allow him to um, make sense of things sometimes and bring a little bit of balance in me. And then I'm able to just expand more of my magic. And there's like this sovereign green color that I don't know. I just felt like drawing it this way. This is exactly how I saw it. So I do really well with philosophers, like, because philosophers allow me to just, I don't know. It just, it's, we have such a great um, communication relationship. And uh, like, he understands me. I understand. He gets on my freaking nerves sometimes, <laughs> but, but it's, <laughs> So well, just on... yeah, just to explain to Dinah that this yeah. is a mark who's sitting on the screen here. <laughs> yeah, so it's it's almost like I don't have to carry that load so much. Mm. That's, beautiful. That's beautiful. Yeah, especially the green. The green is is the underneath. It's the undertone. You're recognizing. It's almost like a part of you. Mm -hmm. yes the gradation and then it's softened that hard protection to just yeah. muted lines that now are yeah so and i view that as the sky it's like the sky is expansive it's so big it's blue it's and then there's me you know i mean that huge just... glow right that's so powerful and, and the within blue, it the yes. blue doesn't confine me Mm -hmm. It just allows me to be who I am. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's so thank you, Mark. Very free flowing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, representation. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. So can I can I go next? Yes. <laughs> All right. So look at this. So this one here. Now the the lines here it's supposed to be blue. I, my blue died. So this should be blue. Anywhere where you see these dark lines should be blue. This right here represents the relationship with my mother. My mother is a, was a complete ruler, complete. I would have never allowed myself the space or agency to even include myself in there as a philosopher. It would have just been all red. But this blue is me hugging her and, and accepting her as she showed up in the world. These lines here, there's a little bit of magician in there. Those little, very little, those little yellow lines. This, this is so for my mother. There was one way or the highway, and so it was that it was one the road. There, right? Yeah, <laughs> and so being able to look at this through a different lens now, and saying, "Okay, I love my mother." And this is just who she was. This was just her core. That's just who she showed up as. And so it wasn't, it was never for me to change who she was. 
but I'm able to embrace it as a philosopher and understand it and, and love her and, and realize that in all that red, there was some magic because to raise five sons with <laughs> one income, there was a lot of magic there. So wow. it's just interesting how Rasa and I had the, uh, these, these, um, this intermingling of colors. So we chose family to do that. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah. Beautiful. That is beautiful. beautiful. Yes. That's fantastic. Um, wow. This is amazing. So it is um, amazing. I, so, you, you both, you're smiling. I love that. So there's been, there's some sort of little bit oh, we, of transformation we, here. We've been to, doing work all this time. Yeah, now we even realize. So, so Mark's mother was my father's sister. Mm. Yeah. So I'm able to, and, and my, my, my father and his mother were in the same wavelength of dogmatic thinking. Yeah. So I had the male parent. He had the female parent. He's a male. I'm a female. So I'm able to understand how that being raised by a mother who was that, like that, and me being raised by a father who was that. It, it helps me understand better my relationship with my son. You yeah. know? And it also helps him understand his relationship with his daughters. It's just, yeah, it's just a beautiful thing. <laughs> yes. And then back to your piece, you know, you being able to accept them into who you are and create the balance and the harmony, right? It's just an assimilation of color so softly in your piece as yeah. opposed to hard, direct, anything solid it just was a fluid softness to it that it's calming to look at both of your pieces even though yeah. your hug mark both of your hugs were a little intense they didn't touch them and her ruler was in heavy red there again was a softness and yeah. a nice energy to both of your pieces so beautiful Excellent. i love it <laughs> you. Uh, uh, we'll say, we'll say, what have you done? You know, what I've done, what have I done is like you can look it up. Uh, I don't know, my art is. Can you see it? Um, hold it closer to your chest. Okay, now? Yes. Yeah. And up a little bit. To your face, yeah. Yeah, I think we can see it. It's subtle, but we can see it. The center is a, the yellow, and then the sideways are like blue, and then the baseline is green. And who, who are we talking, who are you representing here? My, uh, this is for my grandmother. Mm. It was a very levitating, very uh, charismatic figure. But at the same time, she has like this beautiful soul in her. And, uh, uh, you know, she nurture you. She always wants you to exceed in life, you know, especially with the window from the norm that, you know, I came from. It's a very tight space to to get out of the, you know, in, into a good situation so mm -hmm. she's a, a highly educational believer um and at the same time that green represents she give you that sovereign value where you get that protectiveness from her you know she she's always there for you and uh, i always try to symbolize is that uh, you know you know when i get an opportunity of this nature and this is uh whom whom i'm you know designating for Beautiful. So that green is like the foundation that she established where she's coming from that she could pass on to you. And then there's that wonderful glow, almost like a flame of the magic flame that just emanated from her that impacted you. And yes. so the blue, is it blue that is around it? Uh, the, yes. Yes. Can you say a little bit more about the blue? You know, from the philosopher side, um, uh, you know, you know, she's like very, and she guides you, uh, to get into, you know, to get into the right predicament in anything, you know, mm -hmm. uh, so that's what I'm trying to represent in that. Beautiful. 
Yes, That's, and it, it's a big part of the of the of the picture too. This is not a small little thing. She would she made a big impact on you. I'm guessing. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, That's Christine. Really, yeah, and potentially she was a sovereign. You think, Mister? Yes. Yes. That's what I'm. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. It's, it, one of the things that's very interesting is, and, and I think Hadassah, you mentioned it, philosophers and uh, magicians are, are very simpatico because they have, if you like, the magician has the FM, feminine-minded male, but, sorry, mes, MF, get it the right way around, masculine-minded female, and the philosopher is a feminine-minded male. So there's FM, FM, MF, mm -hmm. and it's almost a, sim, it's a very... Um, entwined relationship like this whereas sometimes one of the advantages with the ruler and the sovereign they can both seem uh extreme sometimes because there's the mm and the ff and their relationship is often like this as opposed to like this mm. and all of these are, are okay that's the thing is we've got to remember that the the synergy of the whole piece is what makes the orchestra work that's mm -hmm. And so when we're listening to ourselves, um, as I repeat again, that the magician might find that the ruler is control too controlling on occasion, but we can all control. So we can all, we can all, it's like, um, I want people to get to understand that all the archetypes are wise when they want to be. Because we live in a world at the moment where there are many rulers who are too uh, egocentric and narcissistic in a, in a political sense, and we know that. And I don't want people to misunderstand the issues when it's male, female, ruler, sovereign, magicians, whatever. These are facets that we can start enabling everybody to grow the richest of themselves. Mm -hmm. And that's really important. I, I drew something, so I think you can probably see it. Uh, okay. And again, what I found, I was a little bit more. Oops. Okay, we see pretty much, yeah, half of it. Maybe. Okay, so what I found, it was about a philosopher. Um, it was a particular philosopher who I fell out with recently. So I thought, how could I protect him? Um and it was in a work context. And what I found was, I felt like this was his face, but back of his head, and that I was somehow protecting him. So did you notice the yellow coming down here? Mm -hmm. I think that's my, I want to shine my magician on him to make him realize um, he doesn't have to hide away. Uh, mm -hmm. Because... The danger side with philosophers is that if they get too into why, 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 they can go down internally. Mark smiling. <laughs> Absolutely. So um, there's my magician coming in to say, yeah, look, I can protect you. Um, but notice there's quite strong lines there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I found that quite interesting for myself. And that's... And that's why I think it's it's this what I love seeing in those pictures. And maybe as um, if you would take a photograph of your pictures um, and post them to us on WhatsApp or, or somewhere, because it'd be great to have that collection. Because I was thinking about your original little red figure, Hadassah, with the yellow. And then the yellow ended up in the middle of that what looked like a beautiful sea. And Mark, if you look at your two pictures together, mm -hmm. one of the things I observe about them is the, the boldness. Yes. You know, they're both bold, and that's that's your your size. Mm -hmm. yeah. So and, and also but, the yes, the energy that's created in the kinds of marks, the like a, the hugs for your mom. There's an energy there. It's an, yeah. it's a bit intense. Yeah. Oh, um, that so relationship there was, intense. there was 
power and powerful emotion that you were feeling and expressing there in those marks. They weren't, it wasn't necessarily a subtle thing. Yeah. But that's, that's the beauty of it. I feel like the best thing to do would be everyone to take pictures and email them to you, Pauline. Yes. That would and be then, then you could send them around. Um, and it, it's a, it's a, what we're doing is we're creating a collage of our feelings about ourselves and about other people. Mm-hmm. So I think, you know, um, I can go through this with you, Diana, more. But once we start drawing it, I notice with my two pictures, they're both bold, they're big lines, and I like big things. I'm not particularly a big person, but I have a, I'm not very tall, but I'm a very square person, and I've got very heavy bones, and I like um, larger pieces of jewellery and uh it intrigues me now that I wear my pearls because that's the only de- delicate thing that I've ever worn in my life. <laughs> um, it's a statement. But, yeah, it's a statement. Yes. So remember, it's color, shape, and scale. So you're, you're coloring. We we. You're coloring in your skin tone, hair, etc. Is part of you, but the main thing with your shape and scale is whether the scale is large or small or whether your shape is squarer or softer. And given the fact that men generally have a straighter uh, body structure than women, because we have boobs and bottoms, we all have boobs and bottoms, but there's general different shapes. But the underpinning is really important when we look at the whole thing together. So I think your drawings are fabulous. And um, yes. Thank you all. I just, I thoroughly enjoyed this. Thank this you. is wonderful. And for sharing and for being vulnerable. And you all are artists in your own unique way. Just own <laughs> that. Just own it. <laughs> um, I think one of the things I wanted to share is that when we're, when we're looking at um, relationships, uh, just, to, just to focus on that for a minute, you each have a relationship with the other three archetypes. So although we have mentioned in some conversations or I don't like the ruler in me when I'm not a ruler, um, is try and focus on your core starting point and then look at how you elevate your level of awareness. So as an example, if you're in a... Oh, thank you, Mark's put the pictures on the chat. That's great. Oh, it's good. To explore this further. Um, take some time to draw those pictures about other people in your life. So look at the the sovereign, the ruler, the magician, the philosopher. One of the things about um, the traits that we look at in our lives, you know, at the moment everybody's looking at uh, a very dysfunctional world and how we can create harmony. There's no harm in harmony. So we're not going to be harming anybody. How do we create harmony with those archetypes which we've had maybe a run in with? We've had uh, a challenging time in our life. That might have been parents, might have been uh, other siblings, it might have been all sorts of people. But how do we draw those people in? And what are the fundamental uh, values that we share? Just to go back to, to my son, when I realized this ruler activity, it helped me tremendously not to be an overbearing mother and try and get him to think like me. But the challenge in our world is not to pay, persuade people to think like you to myself, it's to help them to think like themselves and to understand you're uh, different. So when I realized that with him, I had just such a quick turn in my relationship I didn't have to ask him why all the time. I didn't have to ask him what's going on. I just said, you know, what's going on with you in the box that you're in at the moment? And we don't talk very often, but we have a very, very good relationship. So there's something around uh, understanding the different energy levels of the archetypes. So remember the ruler is loves action. So we'll say you love action. Your, your culture has enabled you to be a very loving, sensitive, empathetic, kind person, but you love action. So that's that's that starting point. And then when I know 
I need somebody with action, I come to you because I know the ruler will take action. I know the magician will make magic ideas. I know the philosopher will care about why everybody's here. I know that the sovereign will be anxious to really understand who I am. And I love that. So there's the value in understanding the differences and not all trying to be the same. Mm -hmm. For me, that's the magic of what comes together. Mm -hmm. um, we're coming to the, the top of the second hour and I just want to, uh, I will catch up with you, Diana. I'll come around and I'll come around and sit with you and we'll do some drawing together. Uh, we had the fortune <laughs> of living near each other. Um, and you obviously needed your sleep today, so that's okay. <laughs> Um, but what I wanted to do is just to go around the room and, and really ask for what's your highlight? What have you discovered about yourself and somebody else or everybody? Um, and just give us an insight into where you're at now. Want to start with me? Yes, please. Okay, perfect. So... I learned a lot about myself and, and more so than just me. Um, this is helping me to gain a, a, a deeper understanding. I've read a lot of books in my time. And one of the books that stands out is the, um, it's Franklin Covey's uh, Seven Habits. One of the habits are to seek first to understand before you're understood. And getting a better understanding of these archetypes, my own archetype, and not just having that self-awareness of being able to know what is my baseline, <clears throat> but being able to identify the archetypes in others and how they're showing up allows me to give them the space, the grace, and the agency to show up as they really are, and not to try to change someone. Um, and it's helping me to not only understand relationships I currently have with my daughters and coworkers, what have you, but the relationships that I've had with people from my past, unresolved relationships. And now it's like, oh, okay, she was acting this way. That's who she was. It wasn't, it wasn't me. This, this, this was her archetype. This is how she showed up in the world. Anything less than that, she wouldn't be who she is. Who she is doesn't make her good or bad it's just that's what it is um the last the last thing i would say is um i, I could definitely see how so so Hadassah and i i i'm so grateful for her i love her so much as my cousin it was uh january 1st of this year and she had asked me she told me happy new year's and we had this conversation and I was feeling kind of down. And she said, what's wrong? I said, well, ordinarily, I would have gotten a phone call from this woman named Jeannie. You know, uh, Jeannie was an ex-girlfriend of mine who I thought I was over. But Hadassah showed me, oh, no, cousin, you are in what's called limerence. <laughs> and let me, and let me, let me, I will tell you that I now understand even deeper limerence being the philosopher because mm -hmm. a philosopher has to know why you know and so you're trying to get closure and so um th this was really really interesting i'm very grateful for everyone on this panel you know i learned a lot about all of you and learned a whole lot about me so thank you very thank much you. thank you thank you mark yes. it's so wonderful <laughs> we'd love so to go Who's going to go next? I'll go next. Okay, Hadassah. So I'll just have to say that I've today has allowed me to um, accept the ruler in me more graciously and um, with appreciation. You know, and there are times that maybe I am a little bit of a philosopher, maybe a little bit of a sovereign. You know, but at the core, I'm a magician, and that's it's 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 a beautiful thing. It is a beautiful thing, and we it's there's like these intersections mm. of yeah. all these archetypes. 
Um, but at the end of the day, that core archetype, that's that's your essence. And it's okay to be that essence. And everything else is just a, um, an added bonus, depending on where you're navigating in life. Um, so I appreciate everyone being so vulnerable and showing um, a side of um, yourself that's very... <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. rules and her magic is understood. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so I, I just, I love life and I love these connections with people that I may have already known them in person and then others that I don't know at all. But... Um, your essence is so needed in this world right now. Yes. And um, it's, it's a beautiful thing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, Mose, Mose, tell us about how you're feeling now. I'm, I'm, I'm actually very excited, uh, very honored, uh, first and foremost, for me to be fortunate enough to be in this beautiful country, uh, uh, in the land of opportunity in the land of beauty uh i truly help you know and then meeting you uh, guys and then it's a great honor and privilege and my prayers to peace and prosperity to the world you know accounting the current situation and then uh paramountly uh coming here and learning you know the perspective of uh archetypes and then you know it makes me uh realize where I'm, you know, where I'm categorized into and then, uh, you know, awareing that I'm kind of a ruler is uh, significant to me. And then it's a great honor and privilege, Dr. Pauline, you always generous, Christine, Mark, all of you, thank you very much. Thank you. Well, thank you, thank you. And and uh, I've learned so much about you and the Ethiopian um world i was looking forward to traveling to your country one day we're looking into that with education <laughs> yes absolutely um and 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 Dina, i i know you've missed a lot but is there anything you you would like to say about being a beautiful sovereign here as well <laughs> i wish that i had seen it all i'm i'm looking forward to uh having catch up with you Pauline um, oh definitely um and um I will send you all the powerpoint as well so you've got the pictures and to just really study those pictures and when you look at the the four pictures that I AI created which Christine discovered from us just sometimes meditate looking at them because their energy gives you that sense of who they are in the world. Notice that the ruler and magician look straight on. The sovereign and the philosopher look slightly away. The feminine energy is very gentle. The masculine energy is, is more outgoing and action-oriented. But we need both yin and yang in the world. We need all of us. And I'm so hugely grateful to you, Christine, for bringing this um, energy to this work. I think it's oh, done. Thank you. I mean, I, I fully have embraced my sovereign because of you. I didn't know, I didn't know much about archetypes before we started the conversation. So this has been tremendous joy and a beautiful journey for me that I hope we can continue. Absolutely. And I, I would like to just share that, and I don't want to keep going on, but we do have a world wisdom circle every second Wednesday of the month at 8 a.m. Pacific time. And that will be actually next Wednesday, the 8th. And that is a gathering of women and men across the world. I always feel like I'm a global citizen. And I think more than ever, we need this harmony in the world. We need authentic harmony. And my core is that we accept ourselves as who we are. And our superpower is understanding that everybody else is different and unique and fascinating, as opposed to difficult. Um, so we would like to see this as the beginning of a journey. Uh, there's there's many, many deeper aspects to this that we can explore, and we'd love your feedback. So as well as just your feedback now, we might send you a few questions to ask you how to quantify what this potential is here. And I would like to see this in the corporate world. And when I say corporate world, I don't necessarily mean the big organizations, but the medium-sized 
businesses where men or women are not happy at the moment. They're challenged by all sorts of things going on. I, my passion is to bring harmony there as a core principle for good, sustainable growth of business. And all of you are business people, as well as um, beautiful human beings. So I really honor you all. And I appreciate you being here. This has been really, really exciting for me. Yes. yes. Thank you. No, thank you. Thank you. Are there any last comments? Mose, you've got your hand up. Yes, yes, I would like to say thank you to Christine. The way that you, uh, you know, like for me, it's visualization gives me more of, uh, you know, I get it in that way. And then it was it was such a, a beautiful thing. Thank you very oh, much. Thank you. Thank you for embracing it. Yes. And, and also, I also, I also put out your picture. Check it out on LinkedIn. Okay. Okay. One okay. of the things that I hope that you realize is we've got every character here. And what we learn is that I couldn't have done this without a sovereign because the sovereign brings in the aspects that I don't have. And, and the vice versa. Mark. Yeah. Just two two things. Are there deductive questions that can be asked that can give you a clue as to what type of architect someone is? Yes. Um, and, and thank you for asking that. The, so I have um, one book that's out, The Power of Authentic Harmony, which takes a lot of examples. But I also have another book, which I need to publish, which has uh, other instruction in including body shape. So oh. the way we see body shape, so, for instance, we can go into that next time. You know, the when a, a magician often has a squarer, shorter forehead, a philosopher has a longer forehead, um, the body shape matters. Um, you can think of examples of physicality. Um, if I said Piers Brosnan and Tom Hanks, Piers Brosnan is a ruler because he's much more angular. Tom Hanks is a philosopher, he's much softer. So there is a physicality and a body shape aspect to this which we haven't been into yet but there's more depth and uh, also more depth in terms of programs that we can do in the business world which I'd love to talk to you about Mark for sure and and really getting people to tune in to what they were born with that's what I think is so stunning about this we have everything we need we yes. just well, <laughs> well Christine and Dr. Pauline I, I just want to tell you the philosopher in me really respects and appreciates and admires the archetypes, all the archetypes that, that, have, that have shown up here today. Wonderful. Thank I you. have to say Thank one you. thing. This has been magical. Oh. It has been absolutely magical. And yes. we, we always believe that everybody who's meant to be here turns up, whatever yes. time. <laughs> and so you were meant to be here, Diana. And uh, and next time we'll all, we'll all get together again and expand our colorful yes. wisdom. Wonderful. Thank you again. Thank I'm, you buying, I'm buying crayons today. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's right. I, I only just discovered my crayons in the cupboard the other day, so I was really delighted. <laughs> but I, I really love the fact that you all got in there and you started drawing and doing that. And, you know, it's, it's like somebody asking me to sing when I don't sing, you know. It, it, it's sometimes nervous. You think, oh, everybody's going to look at my drawing. But you all played up really strongly, and I really appreciate that. Yes, but absolutely. isn't but isn't isn't that but isn't that the paradox of life? I mean, if you really think about it, fear, fear, whole fear is that one thing. It's 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 the false evidence appearing real, right? And so yes. I know I'm not an artist, so I I had a lot of reservations about this. You know, <laughs> oh my god, I got to show my you know I got to draw. I'm not the artist, but then. Once we got into it, it's like, wow. You know, yes. one, once once you face the fear, you conquer the fear itself. Right. Just, do, just feel it and do it anyway. So today was great. Thank you so much. Thank That's you. right. I, I, I shared that. I had a lot, a lot, a lot of responses on LinkedIn saying, oh, this looks fantastic. This is fantastic. And from men. But the resistance to sign up. And I think it is that resistance to, oh, I'm going to, somebody's going to look at my drawing. But actually, right. it, it, once yeah. Christine took you into that visualization, it became an activity that you could do. You could do again. I was right. afraid I yeah. wouldn't have a page large enough to draw, you know, the amount of love that Hadassah has. Because there is no page. There is no canvas big enough 
to describe oh, an I'm just well. tiny. I'm just tiny. <laughs> yeah. But that just speaks volumes, right? I just want to say yeah. I've done hundreds of workshops with every different demographic. There's always one or two in there and go, oh, no, I'm just not going to be able to do this. I'm not an artist. I haven't done this since I was five. I'm going, great, because you're going to really have fun. I just, yeah. dis- I just, dis- you, you know, dispel it right away. Like, it's not about that, because if, if you can visualize, you can, you can, put color on a paper and it just flows because yeah. you're in your heart. It's just, it's like an, a magical intuitive thing from the brain to the hand, to the page, right? Right. If, through. if, if you think about it, who, who are the best salespeople in the world? Children are right. They don't take no for an answer. Right. If you had five, five-year-olds up and you gave them crayons, they'd be going crazy. They'd be, you know, <laughs> there, there are no limitations and they would tell you what they drew. <laughs> And they would be right? superpowers, right? Yeah. Yes. yes. Well, so this this allows us to to unleash the little child in us. Right. Well, that's right. And and that's when you think about it, Mark. If you take it to a team yes. and you get them all drawing, I found the most amazing things because we're on Zoom. It's it's different, but when you're in the room and drawing, that's even more exciting. And people want to draw yes. on other people's yes. flip charts. Yes. Right. And we've got to do more of this. It's like this is the energy that can change the world. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Um, listen, I'm just grateful. I'm just grateful Hadassah didn't say, this is me in a snowstorm wearing a white hoe, <laughs> white jacket, you know? <laughs> That's why I moved away from where it snows. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness me. But oh. there's a whole story behind that we'd want to oh, hear. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Next time. <laughs> you guys are great. I have to jump, jump off, but thank I you so much. Thank you thank, thank you, you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you everyone. Thank you. Take care. Thank you, Bye. Thank you. And I was I will see you all soon. I'll see you soon, Diana. I'll come round to you. And I'll see you on Friday night, we'll say. Thank you, Diana. I'll I'll give you a call. Okay. Okay, darling. Bye. Bye.